Hello parents, welcome to AP Physics 1 and 2. My name is Mr. Huang and I am your student's AP Physics teacher for this year. So who exactly am I? This is how we're going to get started today. My name is Edward Huang and it is actually my first year here at Hoffman Estates High School. This is my second year being a physics teacher. I taught two years of chemistry before this year, so my fourth year overall, but my second year teaching physics. I am also a math science tutor and a gymnastics coach at Stevenson High School. I am, a, I am from this area, kind of, so I went, from, uh, went to Elk Grove High School in 2008, and I graduated, or went from 2004 to 2008, graduated in 2008, uh, and I also went to Loyola University of Chicago, got my bachelor's in physics there. I also got my master's in chemistry, so I spent quite a bit of time at Loyola University. Um, got sick of the place, went to DePaul University for my second master's in secondary education. This degree allows me to sit in front of this computer screen and talk uh, at this screen to record this video and also to meet your lovely students and teach them some physics. Um, so towards the left there, that is a picture of me and one of my dogs. His name is Ghost and I love him to death. So the absolute best, best method to reach me is through email. So my email is ehuang at d211.org. Please email me regarding any, any question, whether it be a small minor question or a big major one, please email me and I will definitely get back to you uh, the, at least by the next school day. Um, usually I'm a little quicker than that, usually within a couple hours, depending on the day. Uh, please email me if you'd like to set up a Zoom meeting. We can meet and talk about whatever it is you, you wish to talk about. I am more than willing to set some time apart and talk to, talk to anyone. So what topics does physics include? So physics includes all of these topics here, classical mechanics, um, motion forces and momentum. We are currently going through the motion unit, uh, acoustics, waves and sound, optics, which includes light, thermodynamics, which is heat and energy, electromagnetism, which has electricity and magnetism, uh, and modern physics, which includes quantum mechanics, relatively, relativity, and particle physics. Uh, in AP physics, we actually will probably not be touching on light or modern physics, or yeah, we'll probably be talk, we'll be talking about the energy component of thermodynamics. Um, it is very unfortunate because modern physics and light are probably two of my favorite units to talk about and teach. Uh, however, the AP curriculum does not include those topics. If you get anything out of uh, this video, it would be to encourage your student not to get discouraged. Uh, AP physics in general, not to mention AP physics, is a different beast. It, uh, it, it takes a lot more um, work and effort to probably achieve the same grades that your students are used to. Um, it does not come intuitively for most people and most people need to put in the extra effort and time to study the subject in order to achieve the level of success that they want. Uh, so especially early in the beginning, it is common for students, especially AP students, to get discouraged because they don't achieve to the same level that they are used to achieving. Um, but that being said, if they are willing to put in the effort, I, I promise that your students will be able to find the success that your student wants. All that being said, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, this is pretty much it for the basic information of the open house video. However, you can continue for a mini physics lesson. I thought some parents might like to, to stick around to see how I teach things, especially in this format here. So this diagram shows the sun and the earth, definitely not to scale. And the sun gives off light 
that comes towards the Earth here. The sun gives off white light, however, uh, <clears throat> we are going to simplify that by showing red, green, and blue, even though white light is essentially all the colors of the rainbow, at least the white light that's coming from the sun. But we're going to simplify that down to red, green, and blue because these three colors still make up white light. And so the sun rays come in pretty much parallel because it is so far away from the earth. And before it reaches the surface of the earth, earth, it has to go through this atmosphere here. And that blue line represents, blue dotted line represents the atmosphere. So what effect does the atmosphere have on incoming light? That is the question. So when blue light reaches our atmosphere, it interacts with the molecules and atoms in the atmosphere. And since blue light has such a small wavelength compared to the other colors, it scatters quite a bit. It's something known as uh, Rayleigh scattering. And uh, you will see, or you can see here from this diagram, there's quite a bit of scattering from this blue light. Green light has a slightly longer wavelength than blue light, so it still scatters a bit, but definitely not as much as blue light. And then red light has a very long wavelength compared to blue light, and therefore it barely scatters at all. And so when these light rays reach the atmosphere, you have blue light scattering a bunch, green light scattering a little, and red light barely scattering at all. So let's consider two observers here. We have one observer down here, and then one observer on top here. This observer has the light rays coming straight above his head. And so what time would this person be experiencing? What time during the day? And here I am expecting an answer from my computer. Well, it would be noon for this person, ideally, because the light rays are coming from straight above. And so it would be noon for this person uh, down here. The person up here, it is about one quarter of an Earth rotation away. So that is about six hours. So we can say that this is either 6 a.m. or 6 p.m., depending on the direction of the rotation. Uh, but either way, this person is experiencing a different time. So this person essentially, uh, when he looks up but not towards the sun, the color that this person will see the most would be the blue light because the blue light is getting scattered all over the place. So these light rays, uh, the blue light rays would reach this person as long as this person isn't looking directly at the sun. If this person is looking directly at the sun. This, uh, he will receive mostly red and green light. But looking away, he will receive mostly blue and some green light, and therefore uh, this person will see a blueish sky. Well, now let's consider this observer at 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. Uh, you know, those are the typical times for sunrise or sunset. And so you can see the light rays have to go through much more of the atmosphere to reach this person than it does to reach this person. And since blue light scatters so much, pretty much all of it's going to scatter away before reaching this person. So this person will receive pretty much no blue light. The green light will scatter a medium amount, and so this person may receive a little bit of green light here, but the light that this person will receive the most would be the red light, because red light barely scatters at all, and so most of that red light comes right through and reaches this person, and this is why during the sunset or a sunrise, you see mostly red light around the sun. Thanks for attending my physics lesson.